All right, we just picked up the transfer case uh, skid plate for the Jeep uh, Gladiator. The JL should be very close to this. Um, just like the first one, the packaging was awesome. It came very, um, very padded and very well packed where there's no issues. And let's, let's go ahead and get underneath, put it on. The instructions were kind of a little weird with some of the wording, um, but we'll kind of go over that with you and hopefully show you what we're doing. So this was the box that it came in. As you can tell, just like the last one, plenty of uh, paper to hold it. Very well packaged and shipped. Not as big as the box as the last one, uh, but still very good size. All right, so as you can tell, we have it out of the bag. We're up underneath the Jeep. Um, as you can tell in my first video, we do have the uh, engine slash uh, transmission skid plate on here already. And this is gonna be the new transfer case skid that will go right up here. Um, if you've got the same way we do here, you've got these two. Um, these two bolts here are gonna come out, which then go through here. This third one is unused um, since we already have that plate, but if you did not have um, this skid plate, there is a hole, a third one you can use. Um, there are just two holes right here, and we are gonna put the little spacer down on the hole. When we lift that up, this uh, bolt is just going to go right up through it. We are going to use some Loctite. Um, this does not get removed. And if you can tell in the instructions, when you read that part there, this is where it gets a little bit confusing um, just because they're using abbreviations. Um, they did show photos, but it was kind of hard when they were saying what overlaps which. But this, your um, transmission skid plate is going to overlap your new um, differential or sorry, uh, transfer case. Um, just so if you do hit a rock and you're sliding past, it continues on forward or dropping down to that. Um, as you can tell, we did have those spacers in there before. They're kind of hard to see. Um, they're just right there, just barely in there. We're gonna be removing those two, but the third one will stay to keep that at the right space. And as you can tell, I did remove the rear two bolts. That third one on the far side still is in place. And I've just lifted this up into place right now. Um, and I did remove those spacers that were in there. Um, so those has been removed for that to fill in. And then we're gonna lift, put the spacers on the back, lift that up and bolt it in. All right, one small complaint. When I went to put in the washers that they included, they are not fitting on. Um, they are pretty much too small. Not sure what's up with that. Uh, they probably just sent the wrong ones. Luckily I did have um, some of the larger ones. I believe they're 5 16 and they are stainless steel. So we'll just use those and put them on that way. And there you go, that is it in the up position and secured. Um, Come back here, you've got the, the two back bolts. Um, you know, you could do some damage to those, which was nice about these ones, they put this little, um, I don't know what you'd really call that, but kind of protector of the bolt head so you don't mess it up. Although this back one here are Allen wrenches, it is still susceptible, but probably a lot less where that's at. Um, as you can tell, I've still got to clean this up from our last off-roading trip. We just got back from Tennessee doing wind rock. Um, and we also did the Hurricane Creek on the way, uh, pulling a trailer. Might have some videos for that. Uh, this one back here, although it is secure, it's not moving at all. I might come in eventually and drill a hole up through the um, the factory frame part here, this, and just put another bolt there off to the side. Um, I don't see it really being an issue. If you pull down on it, it's not moving. This thing's pretty solid. Um, the nice part is it does have these little bit of a lip coming up, so it does help protect anything over. Same thing on the back side is it's got that lip going backwards. So if you were to uh, be backing up on something and hit it, it's going to drive that down and under. It's not just a flat plate. They have taken a little bit of time and care kind of designing that. Um, but overall, we've been super happy with it. It allows the heat out for plenty of uh, open space still left here for heat draw to come out. And it seems to be doing well. We'll put it to use. Just kind of getting it up close when installing just the front transmission skid plate. Uh, the spacers did go up in there creating this gap. I wanted to show with having these uh, one on top of each other why you no longer need those front uh, spacers. It is a solid contact across there. If you were to put that spacer, it would actually ride down just a little bit more. And sorry for it being a little bit dark. We are out in the garage and just using some uh, undercarriage lights, trying to move them around best possible. Uh, if you have any other questions about the install of either one of them, let me know and we can either get you some pictures or help that review.